All right, so let's set up our character in Dash3D to export to Blender. I'll use the free assets in Dash3D so you can follow along without any problems, okay? So for my figure, I am using the Genesis 3 female character. The Genesis 3 female character comes for free with Dash. When you install the software, you have access to it, okay? So let's select the Genesis 3 female and click on wardrobe. And I'm using the basic wear, but feel free to use any type of uh, outfit you want, okay? For the hair, let's use the Toulouse hair. So let's select the character, hair, and select the Toulouse hair. And now, with the hair selected, you can change the color to whatever color you want under the materials. So I'm gonna select this color here, so just double click on it so you can change the color. And yeah, I mean, the character is pretty much set up, so let's change the pose of the character. Select the character on the outliner and select poses. And I'm going to use the Fashion Model Pose 02, which is also a free pose that comes with das 3D, okay? Now, the character is pretty much set, so let's export the character. Go to File, Export, and select the OBJ as the file type, give your character a name, and click on Save. I already have the file, so I'm going to overwrite it. Sometimes, on your export window, you don't see all the options, so click on Show Individual Settings, and make sure Write Surfaces is checked, Write Materials Library is on, and select Original Maps. And now, click on Accept. And you're all set on Dash 3D. Now let's move into Blender. So let's first delete the default cube and let's import our OBJ file. So file import wavefront OBJ, select your file, which you just exported from Dash, and you can see the model is huge. So let's resize it, let's make it smaller. So just click on S and move your cursor closer to the world origin. And this is a good size, so let's get closer to the character so we can see all the details. And you can see this is a pretty good character, good proportions and nice features. Now, let's switch to the rendered mode. Let's click on this icon here to change the viewport shading to rendered. And I'm using EV, and you can see that this is a pretty good model, good textures. This is good for background, and especially if you're going to paint over, this is already good enough. But if you want to close up to the character, let's change a couple of textures so it looks a lot better. So let's move closer, and as you can see here, there are problems with the eyes, the eyelashes, the skin doesn't look great, and there's also problems with the hair, so let's tweak a bit the materials to make it right, okay? So first of all, click to expand the mesh outliner on these two arrows here, and now you have access to all the model's materials. Mainly, what we're going to do now is tweak the transparency of the eyelashes. So select the eyelashes, and you can see there are nodes attached to it. We're not going to use the nodes. Click on the Material Properties tab, scroll down under Settings, under Blend Mode, select Alpha Blend. And you can see the eyelashes now appear with transparency. They appear correct. Now, let's correct the eyes. So the first thing you're going to select is the eye moisture, okay? Also change this to Alpha Blend, and you can see now, we can see the irises of the model, but they are not correct yet. Take a look at this, they are still too dark, there's not any transparency attached to it. So let's make it even better, right? So uh, under the Materials Outliner, so you scroll up, let's go up in here, and select the Cornea material, and do the same. Just on the Blend Mode, select Alpha Blend. And you can see, we can see now the color of the irises and the pupils, okay? So this is actually already good enough for the eye. So let's fix the skin of the character. So we're going to begin by selecting the face material. So on your outliner, select the face to have access to the face material. And as you can see, we already have a texture attached to it. We're not going to touch that texture. We're going to change the subsurface value. So let's put a 0.02 value here, and you can see the skin looks better now. We have some sort of transparency, and there is a reddish tint at the edge between the light and the shadow. And if you give a reddish color to the subsurface color, it will look a lot better when you have light shining upon it, okay? 
Now, let's take a look at the greenish border between the areas. This happens because the subsurface is different in this area. So let's give the lips the same values we did for the skin. And you can see we got rid of the greenish line. And if you give an even more red color to the subsurface color of the lips, you will have a lot more influence and show a lot more warmth when the light shines upon it, mimicking the real life color of the skin. Okay, so I'll speed up the video a bit, but I will do the same for all the areas of the body to get rid of the greenish lines. So I just corrected the arms and legs. Now the fingernails and toenails, always giving them the same value of 0.02. Okay, and we're pretty much done with the body and the eyes. Now let's tweak the hair. And you can see down here in the outliner, you have three materials for the hair. The hair, the strands, and the base. So let's begin with the hair base. Under the settings, you change the blending mode to alpha blend. There's no noticeable difference here, but it will make sense in a second. So let's change the hair material now. So if we change this to alpha blend, you can notice that it doesn't look too good. There's this transparency and there's this red color on the skull cap of the character. But if we switch this to alpha hashed instead, now it looks correct, it looks a lot better. And let's do the same for this trans material. So as you can see now, we have a pretty good character for like the middle ground and even the foreground if you're going to paint over and do some photo bashing. Now let me move the light a little bit closer to the character so we can see in better detail just what we did. So think a little bit to the front and here's a good position. So let's get closer and yeah, now we have the reddish tint in the meeting of the light and the shadow, and this is called subsurface scattering, or just SSS. But we can make it even better if we turn on the ambient occlusion, the bloom, and the screen space reflections under the render properties tab. And now we have proper shadows, but there's still one thing we need to do to make it look even better. So select your light, and under properties of the light, you turn on contact shadows and now the hair casts a shadow onto the character. And that completes our tutorial. You now have a character suitable for middle ground and even foreground given that you paint over or photo bash it. Okay? So thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye bye.